I was in entrepreneurial development, venture capital, and in promotion of homegrown technologies, etc. And later, as economic advisor to government of Andhra Pradesh, for the last seven years, I was associated in the development of the state. And uh, I'm aware of the state and also, of course, the other states, you know, luckily today we are living in an age of information explosion, where RBA, the Planning Commission, have been giving data almost on a day-to-day -day basis. Just now, before I came here, I have downloaded from the Ministry of Finance this particular month's economic growth uh, uh, issues. After all, we all should know that Andhra Pradesh is part of India, and then most of the issues like the monetary policy, the fiscal policy, the energy policy, like the coal and gas and all that, and uh, the foreign exchange and all those issues are the debt of the central government actually. State governments, no doubt, you know, they have an important role in trying to create a, an environment where industries and other sectors grow, there's no doubt about it. But most of these issues flow from government of India, like the fiscal policy, as I told you, and the foreign FDAs, etc., etc. So if you see the whole country as such, we are in such a sorry state of affairs. Overall growth in the index of industrial production is 0.6% for the month of February 2013, compared to 4.3% of the corresponding period. And February, April to February 2012-13 is as well as 0.9% compared to what it was 3.5%. And then the next thing is eight core industries. That's very, very important. You know, they all registered together minus 2.5% growth rate in February. As compared to 7.7%, it's minus 2 point. And about 4.3% in, uh, you know, for April to February, it was, you know, zero point, it, it was something like 2.6% compared to what was 5.2 percent. Now you can see the overall country trend as such. I want to answer this, some of the specific issues also. Andhra Pradesh is a state which has been doing extremely well. The four or five states that uh, Madam Sangeeta Reddy mentioned, they're all states with very low uh, economic activity. Therefore, whatever little they achieve, it looks like very higher. It's like a fellow who gets 10 marks once and gets another 20, 20 marks. From 10 to 20, it looks like 100 percent growth rate. But a fellow who gets 95, if he improves to 100 percent, it is only 5 percent growth rate, you know. It's like that the most of the states, like Madhya Pradesh and all that, I don't want to go beyond that, actually. Today, if you look at in India, today, if you look at in India, there are about seven or eight states only which have been called as performing states, the four South Indian states, where there has been a, what I mean by performing states, you know, basically where there is a human development index, which we are now calling as also inclusive growth, where there is a development and there is a growth and also inclusive, you know, these are all very important parameters. The seven or eight states are four South Indian states, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Punjab and Haryana. For Punjab and Haryana, together very small states, you know, the population is not even five crores, not even equal to coastal Andhra area. So these are the only states which have been doing well, but unfortunately during the last year, four of these states, or five of these states, are so it is except Gujarat, all other states in India have been having power cuts ranging from 10 to 12 hours, not just Andhra Pradesh. I think you know, you know, Fiki must be having industries in Tamil Nadu also. Tamil Nadu has a power cut of 10 to 12 hours. This has been very unfortunate thing because, you know, unfortunately there has been a policy paralysis in government of India for the last four to five years. I don't know what's happened to the Prime Minister. He has not been able to provide leadership. I'm not saying anything against him. I'm talking about him as the Prime Minister, not as a Congress person party. I hate to do all that. But the fact of the matter is, he gave permission, the coal ministry gives permission to 200 coal blocks way back in 2008. And his own ministry, the environment ministry stops all of them. And again, you know, another committee is appointed, BK Chaturvedi committee. And he gave such a positive report saying that even if all the coal blocks that were allotted to the private sector, the 200 coal blocks were to start on the same day, the total loss of forest cover would be 0.75 percent of the total forest cover that India has. So he has recommended that you collect one paisa per kg of coal. You will still have so much of money to a forest, 100 such degraded forests, kindly go ahead. And by the time the Prime Minister has taken it up, the CAD came saying that it was a 10 lakh crore fraud and then they said it is 1.8 lakh crore and the whole thing is now in the court. We don't know exactly when the coal will come and the Finance Minister says, we need 185 million tons of coal this year, current year, to be imported. We are producing 500 million tons and that has remained stagnant for the last four years. So there is no coal in India and I don't know where from we are going to import these 185 million tons because the we all know that the 
current account deficit, which is nothing but foreign exchange deficit, is about 5.5% of the GDP of the country. Even in 91, when India was mortgaging gold, it was only 2.5% of the GDP. Now we have 5.5%, there is no foreign exchange. And even if you have got foreign exchange, there is no port facility to import. And even if you can import somehow or other, there is no railway capacity to evacuate all that. The whole problem today in the country is because there has been no governance in government of India for the last four or five years, after a dramatic performance between 2004 and 9, Indian economy grew like never before, you know. During the BJP government rule, it was only 5% growth rate, but it was about 9.5% growth rate during the subsequent UPA government. But really nobody is able to know what happened to our Prime Minister. He has not been simply providing the much needed. And when there is no coal and there is no gas, we have enough coal, enough gas in the country. We have 10% of the world coal with us, but then if there is no coal and gas, it's not the lack of capacity that we are suffering from in Andhra Pradesh. I have about 3,500 megawatts of gas-based power projects which are simply not working. I have about 4,500 megawatts of hydro projects. There is no water in that because there have been no rains. So what do I do with all this? And I have about 1,500 megawatts of coal-based power projects. There is no coal. So it's not the question of adding more capacities, so much as getting more coal and gas. You know, no power project in India can come up unless the central government had promised in writing that they will supply coal and gas. And they're going back on their promises. With the result, we're in such deep problem. So having said this, you know, I've just clarified where we stand. Andhra is doing very well except for this problem. But inherently, we have a small problem compared to Maharashtra, Gujarat. Gujarat has been an entrepreneurship, a state with entrepreneurship for over 200 years. We all know that Mahatma Gandhi has gone there about 100 years ago to attend to some Gujarati clients there in Africa. So it has been an enterprising place. Maharashtra, because it's been developed by the British as the financial capital, I'm not trying to take any excuse. And Tamil Nadu also because of Madras. But we have done much better than all the states. If you look at the rural and semi-urban, that's what I was talking to Mr. Rangneka. You just get into the RBI thing today. Rural and semi-urban, Andhra is leading in the country in terms of banking reach, or in terms of GDP growth rate in that particular area, in terms of our agricultural growth rate. Today we have 1,75,000 crores is agricultural GDP, which is highest in the country. So we are doing very well in that. Only thing is, as uh, former finance minister was mentioning, it's subject to certain restrictions. You know, we have the seasonal conditions and all that. So uh, what next in Andhra Pradesh? I'm just cu cutting down because of Mr. Rangneka. He gave me only five minutes time. What, what we have to do for Andhra Pradesh? All of us together. All of us together. You, me, what I was saying is there should be a, a consensus between judiciary, the media, the ruling party and the opposition political parties, all of us, there should be a consensus. And the CAG also, we should all understand that the development is in need of the hour. Because if there is no economic growth, we will not have, see, the revenues of any state are directly proportional to the GDP growth rate. The higher the revenue, higher the GDP, higher the revenues. And without revenues, there cannot be inclusive growth at all, which we all want. And without inclusive growth, so there will be no, no, we have seen how in 1991, as against the only some 20 or 25 districts in the country, out of 660 districts, we had the natural affected districts. Today, as many as 40%, 220 districts and 40% of India's geographical area is under natural affected now. It's all because there has been no inclusive growth in most of the states. Unlike that in Andhra Pradesh, which has been a, a state, you know, which had the largest uh, contribution of naxalites in India. After the first communist struggle in 1917, the second communist armed struggle in the world came in Telangana. It was called the Telangana Sahidu Poratam. From then till 2005, through twists and turns,